Hi, my name is Makasi, and today I'm gonna show you some fashion pickups. I'm gonna show you some documentaries, a miscellaneous topic, and a couple songs that I think that are in my playlist that I think you would enjoy. So um, let, let's do this. Let's let's get started. You know the drill. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> I sound like those SoundCloud rapper like. Who are just like ascending in the rap scene and are like You know who it is! Even though nobody knows who they are <laughs> Alright, let, let, let me set up the premise Yeah, so I, I, I already said it Like, yeah, I'm gonna show you some pickup I'm gonna show you some music and stuff like that Let's just get started This is not gonna go anywhere So, I know what you're thinking Makasi, you just put out the monthly ferret like two weeks ago And you're right, I did Now what you're forgetting is that in my head I started YouTube three years ago, so I am 12 plus 12 plus 12, 75 weeks behind on my monthly favorite video. So, you know, this is me catching up. So I'm going to put them out whenever I feel like it because I'm behind. Okay, let's, um, let's start with the first item. I have it right here. Now, I've done like three videos on these already because I love them so much. And um, I have some more detail to tell you guys, and I'm also gonna... So my my review video is like 30 minutes long, and I know not everybody has the attention span to watch a 30 minute video, so this will be like a quick, a quick summary of that video if you don't have the time. So I'm gonna try to get this under five minutes for this section. So um, once again, so it's anchor high buff leather boots. This is calf leather, silver tone grill at square toe. The grill is plastic, sadly. Elasticide gusset at sides like most Chelsea boots. I do not like it at all. Not my thing. Incredibly thick leather heel collar. Translucent plexiglass heel. These are these plexiglass are 14.5 um, centimeter or 4.5 4 heels. The stack platform is 4 inches high. Stack leather platform on the front. Insole with a Rickoman logo. It's also calf leather. And um, sharp teeth treaded rubber outsole. Lastly, made in Italy. So. These right here retail for 2.1k. Now I'm gonna talk about some of the main talking point from the main review videos. The walking pattern. You will have to adjust to the new walking pattern because as you can see right here, you're gonna walk like this. You're gonna walk with the heel, with the platform, and then with the grill. So it goes like this. Let me enter the video for my review right now. Yeah, so I'm um, sizing, sizing. So I went through, I went through the size. This is a size 43 or US 10, which is my my preferred size. I still have enough room, and you know it's it's amazing. The leather, the leather is good. It's not great. Like they could have picked a better leather for sure. The quality of the band, is very good. You know, as you can see, it's very elasticized. So like, it's very easy to put your feet in. Okay, I shouldn't say very easy. It, you still have to do a lot of pulling. Like, you gotta stretch them out really far because it is quite deep, the length of this. Another thing that I want to talk about is the plastic grill. This is in fact plastic. And you know, it's gonna get fucked up. I don't know if you can see or not, but after a couple of wears, like, as you can see this, like, it's all getting fucked up. I'll take a photo of it and put it up right now. Um, the plexiglass, so far it's holding up well. There's a plastic thing at the bottom. There's also it also comes with a replacement, so you're good. It's held on by three screws, three very large screws at the top at the bottom. Yeah, it just it's a very nice boot. This is my first higher than 65 millimeter heel. This is 125 millimeter, which is quite high for men and for me. Why did I say for men and for me? Am I not a male? <laughs> Moving on, um, let's talk about comfort. So, so far it's very comfortable and I do, but I do want to say one thing. So, as you know, with most boots, they make the leather on the bottom a bit tougher because it has to keep its shape. So the leather, as you can see here, if I press it right here, it's hard to press. If I press it here, it goes in like that. So, although it fits me perfectly, you still have to break in the leather down here. So, you, my pinky toe goes right here and like this is where the tough leather starts. So. I'm still breaking in that leather part of the boots and it fucked me up so much. I'm gonna put a photo of my feet right now, of my pinky, like, there was like water in it, it's like pus, but like not pus, it was like water, just cause like, 
it was inflamed due to the friction with the boots. I still believe that these are comfortable because like you gotta give the boots a chance to break in first. The, the leather around the boots are very tough because it has to keep its shape, so you have to break that down first. So if I wear it for three months and it's still like giving me blister, then I will say, I will change my opinion and say, yeah, these are not comfortable. I would not recommend these if you were to want to get, if you were to want to get one. But as of right now, they're very comfortable and I have not fallen in these yet, yet. And I'm a bit more careful with walking in these. And um, regarding walking up the stair, it's a bit tough because um, these boots are very long. Like as you can see the length from here to here, they're very long. So it doesn't fit on all the stairs. So I walk sideways like this, like, like this, not straight up like this. I walk sideways like this. What else can I say about these boots? Um, I really like the shark teeth treaded outsole. This is like, so you don't really have to go to a cobbler and put insole because you know, Ricardo gave you one. They're just they're very nice boots. If you want to hear me talk about it more in detail, I made a video, a 30 minute video about it. I'm very proud of it. So not that proud of it. My energy was a bit off in that video, but the information aspect of it is very good. Like I worked very hard on the script, so if you want to give that video a watch, go to my channel and you can do so. But yeah, so, um, Rick Owens, Flagathon, Kiss Bevel Heels boot with the grill. They're very cool. These are like my most outrageous boots out there, in my closet anyway. The next up is definitely my Guidi. Or my Margiela, I don't know. All right, so, the next item is, um, you already seen this, but in a different colorway. It is... The Peter Doe Tattoo Sweater or Turtleneck. So this is the yellow version, which is an SN exclusive. Let's um let's get into a bit of the detail. So it's a um, long sleeve knit wool and viscose blend sweater. The blend of viscose make the sweater more soft and more skin friendly. Rip knit turtleneck collar, cuff and hem. The turtleneck is the perfect length. It fits it fits right up to your neck. You can also roll it down and it still looks good. Logo engraved plaque at size seam. You can see a reflection in it. It's like a mirror type of thing. I'll talk about this later. Signature contrasting tattoo seam in black at size. This is a reference to Peter, the designer himself tattoo. Um, made in China. Um, I do have something to say about this, um, but it's a it's a long tangent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make another review of this sweater, even though I already reviewed these in the blue, but I'm not very proud of that video video it was one of my earlier ones and yeah I, i've been redo not been i did a redo of my raf simon and i'm gonna do a redo of this sweater as well because i feel like my editing has gotten better me talking in front of the camera has gotten better so and it is one of my favorite sweaters so i want to rectify that mistake because i want to be able to watch my own video again <laughs> and i can't watch my earlier ones because it's just they're so cringy they're not they're not cringe it just they're not up to the standard that I would want it to be. And, um, but yeah, um, let's talk about these for a second. So, this Peter Doe jacket, so this sweater. This is a size medium, which fits me better than a size small. I will put the measurement up right now, like somewhere here or here. Um, the retail on these were 1280 and this is an Essence exclusive. It is quite high for a sweater, but I do see why. I do see why it is because, you know, Peter Doe and the team, it's a very small brand, so they have to, you know, recoup their losses for the expense for the A&R stage, R&D stage, I mean. And um, their, their target market is also on par with Bottega Veneta and the Rose. So like, they target those rich, the target market is a rich people. So, you know, they're not for me, but I caught these in a sale and I just, I love it so much. I, I really like how soft this yellow is, like the color. And it just, it fits perfectly, you know, it's a long get sleeve, cropped on the body, and I'm not, I'm not gonna go too much into detail on this, but it's, it's one of my favorite sweaters. I do wear it quite often, but not anymore since it's summertime now, but when it's, win when it's winter time, like, I just wear it around the house because it feels so soft on the skin, and just, it's a beautiful piece, like, 
I love taking photos in it. It makes me look so good. Honestly, I just, I always try my best to support Peter and the team. Oh, by the way, um, Yiru, please be my wife. Please. She's, um, she's one of the designers on the Peter team. I like her a lot. The review of this will be coming up in the next few weeks. Keep an eye out for that. And yeah, let's, let's get to the next video. Let's get to the next piece. I mean, let's get to the next piece. So the next piece I have, which is this Gucci Princeton, 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 Princeton loafer with the fur. So obviously this is quite outrageous, maximalistic. I'll just put one down here. We'll talk about one. So um, obviously the eye can, but let's go into detail first. So um, this is calf leather. It's not that soft. It's more rigid than my other calf leather. Green and red, green and red web strap with double G hardware. Elongated toe, leather insole, leather sole. The wool is lamb. My friend has a kangaroo version, which is a bit weird because, you know, I didn't think you can harvest kangaroo fur. I didn't think they were that long, but Gucci did it. So the wool origin of, on these were in Europe. It's 0.5 heel height. I added, an extra, I added extra outsole to these because originally the sole were very thin and I tend to wear these when it's cold out. So, you know, I also wanted to give it a longer life and yeah, overall it's good. So I added like, I don't know if it's Viper or not, it was, I just told a cop, but hey, can you add an ins can you add an outsole to these so I can, so I can preserve it, its, its life and also make it more comfortable. So he did that. And um, lastly, it is made in Italy. So these loafers, they're very fun to wear because of the fur and it's also easily slip on and off. I wear these a lot when I go to the grocery store because, you know, I just want to put on something and leave the house and, you know, I can wear these without socks or with socks. I prefer to wear these with socks because like the socks give you more comfort because there's not that much support. Like as you can see, it's very thin, like there's, there's not much support. Um, let's talk about one of the main thing, like is it warm? It's incredibly warm. I can wear these without socks in the winter and it will keep my whole feet warm. And your question may be, well, you have an expo an exposed angle, ankles. But you know, with me, I wear my wide legged trousers, so like my pants will cover these. I'm gonna make a video on these soon. I've written the script already, but I'm not that enthusiastic about these cause I don't know, I'm just, I I look forward to making a video about my Peter Doe sweater more than this. Like it's a fun thing, but it just, it's a fun loafer to wear, but I'm just not that excited. Like the script is done. I just need to film it and then film the B-roll for it and then you know edit it but <laughs> just don't have the motivation i'm just i'm just not that into it but yeah these loafers they're very nice um this is brass by the way also i was planning on cutting these because it's super loud to me like i want it to be more subtle so i was gonna plan i was planning on cutting these and like use the brass logo as like um a necklace or something yeah good pair of loafer if you have the funding for it, you should get it, but you know, Gucci and their whole no more real fur thing, which I don't care for, like, dude, whatever, anyway. Well, that, that's that's it for the fashion. Um, everything will be timestamped. If you want to click off, this, click off this video now, after you've seen all the fashion aspect of this video, you may, but for everybody else, Let's talk about a miscellaneous topic. This video, I want to talk about something called the paradox of choice. So this is a marketing thing. I hope you're interested in marketing. But yeah, so um, let me just read you the description of the paradox of choice. So the paradox of choice is an observation that having many options to choose from rather than making people happy and insert, ensuring that they get what they want can cause them stress and problematize decision making. So let me give you an example. So. Netflix, their library is very large and you have to scroll through them like pretty much every five items by one, you know, you know how Netflix works. With so many choices, like my brain constantly, oh fuck, I am so overwhelmed. Like, it gives me anxiety. Just like, if you watch one film, you can't watch 999 other films. So you have to prioritize your time. And then it's like, it's very stress inducing, like, Hang on, there, there's like an there's an example with the paradox of choice. Um, let me let me read it off to you. So, in this experiment, researcher arranged free sample of a brand of jam and asked people to try a different flavor. In one scenario, in one scenario there were six different varieties. In another, there were 24. 
Traditional thinking would have you believe that more options is better because consumer can pick the one that best fits their needs. However, the results of a study showed something entirely different. Although more people tried a gym when they were presented with 24 options versus six, much fewer ended up buying the products. And so the paradox of the the paradox of choice theory tells us that there is a point in which offering too many options makes it difficult to make a decision and that consumer may not make a decision at all as a way to cope, which is what I do with Netflix. Like, I just become too overwhelmed. In today's day and age, we have the internet and you can practically look and read and see anything you want. But again, like, if you choose to become a teacher, you can't be a firefighter. If you choose to be if you choose to be an NBA player, you can't be an NFL player, you know what I mean? So like, when you choose one movie, when you choose one flavor of food, you, you deny yourself of every other, every other flavor, every other job, every other whatever. So it's very overwhelming, it's very um, stress, it's a very stress inducing environment. And I don't know, I just, I just thought it's an interesting theory that you guys would be, might be interested in to look deeper into it. Let's skip to, the next segment, which is, um, so last month, last video, I showed you three films. This week, this month, this video, why do I keep making this thing? This video, I will show you three documentaries that I have watched countless times. And um, they're very, one of them is very near and dear to me. It's very close to my heart. This, um, this first documentary is one in a series. It's called Most Dangerous Way to School, specifically Columbia. So. Um, this is the first stop that I want to show you. It's it just it shows you how like people that live in the province of like developing countries, like how hard it is for them to go to school. And in the Columbia episode, like they had to take boats, they have to walk like hours on end. They have to wake up early at five, six, and like you know they have to tend to their farm, tend to their animal first, and then the, and then the children can go to school, which they have to walk. They have to get on a boat and then walk some more, walk in the mud, their clothes get dirty, and then, you know, other students judge them because they come so far to go to the school. It just, it just we, living living in America, we take so many things for granted. So when, when, I, when I was a student, I hated going to school. I was like, why do we gotta go to school? Like, why do we, why do we need to know math? Why do, why do we need to know cosine, tangent, what the other one? Like, this is nothing to me. That's nonsense to me. I hate school, but for these children, like they 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 want to go to school so bad that they're willing to wake up two three hours early and then walk a long time and take a fucking boat just to go to school. Like it just it puts things into perspective as to how much we have, like how good we have over in the Western atmosphere, in the Western developed world. I really enjoy these type of documentaries because like it expands my perspective on life. Like, I always want to learn more about how other people live, specifically people who are like more on the secluded side and not in the city because like, I know how people in California live. I know how people in London live. They live just like me, you know? It's just all developing city world, like, I know that, but I want to know what the Argentinian, how they live, like stuff like that. And like the provinces of Brazil, people living in the Amazon forest, like I want to know more about those people. And like these documentaries shows me that. Another documentary that I want to show is, is um about the frog, like the hallucinogenic frog. Probably he sent one of their associates to the, into the Amazon, you know, to search for this hallucinogenic frogs. And um, let me just tell you about why I love this documentary. It's the frog, we can talk about it later, but the main reason I love this documentary is that, um, so where the frogs are located, it's like very secluded in the Amazon tribe. So they have to take a boat because you know, there's no road that goes there. So they have to take a boat and then it's like a three, four days journey. So every night they have to stop at like a, a small house. On the first night, I believe like around the seven or eight minute mark, like, it shows like how this one family live and it's very familiar to me because I grew up in Cambodia. Um, but anyway, you're probably watching the, you're probably watching it right now and I'm probably showing you the, the bathroom scene. So um, their bathroom is essentially a couple plank with a hole into the river and that's how they shit and pee. And like when I, where I grew up in Cambodia, like it was very similar. We lived close to the river, but like we had a somewhat working bathroom. But like essentially it was still like, you can't flush it, you know, you have to grab some water from like a tank nearby and then f 
flush it yourself essentially that's that's how bathroom are in um developing countries watching this documentary it, it reminds me of home like even though it takes place in brazil and i grew up in cambodia like it's very similar but yeah okay let, let's talk about the frog now um in the end they do they do end up you know getting the frog and they take it high and um i hope i don't think i'm spoiling anything but um yeah so um they also so they had help from the tribe the tribe that live in the amazon and um the crew also like took batteries, took like magazines, stuff like that to give to the tribe because like, you know, they're very secluded. They rarely get supplies. So I thought that was very nice of them. It's a nice documentary. It, it shows you how the Amazon, how the tribes in the Amazon live. And I don't know if you're like me or not, but I just, I enjoy seeing how other people live in other countries or other cultures. Now, the last documentary I hold very near and dear to my heart. So the title of it is like, poverty in central asia so i'm not gonna lie to you this documentary is very tough to watch because these people that they show in the documentaries like these people live below the poverty line so like they have to worry a lot about the things that we don't have to worry about like you know like where they live which is central asia and eastern european like they don't always have working water working running water the electricity is like you know in and out in and out and then since they live below the poverty line, they don't make a lot of money. So then like they have to really budget themselves very well. Otherwise, like they can go without food for a day, a week or even a month. Like, it's very hard to live below poverty line. And I believe the poverty line is like 250 in most of the family in the video. Like they went to Poland, Serbia, one of the stands. Oh yeah, but when I say one of the stands, like, you know, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Turkestan, Turkmenistan, stuff like that. Like, all the stands. It's a whole Eastern Bloc thing or Central Asia thing. Like, okay, here's how America teaches, like, world history. In 1950 and 1960, we were at a, we were, we were entering the Cold War with the Soviet Union, the Eastern Bloc. You know, like, Poland and all that, Bulgaria, blah, blah, blah. Oh no, 1990, the Soviet Union is broken up. All right, we don't have to care about the Eastern Bloc anymore. Now we gotta worry about some other shit. That's how much I knew about like Central Asia and Eastern European. That's how much we were taught about those countries. Like I have this deep fascination with Central Asia and I plan to visit one day and I, and I want to visit Kazakhstan first because that's the country that I know the most of. And then they have like a very extensive train system. So then you just take the train from Kazakhstan to like Bulgaria, Ukraine, Russia, wherever, wherever nearby. In this documentary, like it shows a lot of family, like from all around Central Asia and Eastern Europe, like show how they live. And, you know, they live in Central Asia and Eastern Europe. So the temperature can go very high and the temperature can go very low. So they have to worry they have to worry a lot in the winter about warmthness like they have to budget their electricity because if it, if they turn the heat on too much like they might not they might have to you know skip a meal because it's like the worst game ever do you want food or do you want warmthness like that's the game they have to live that they, that's the game they have to play but the parents the parents of this poverty written family they want, they want their children to have a better life. They dream, they dream of their children moving out of this house, moving out of this city, going to the West, going to London, going to Russia to work at a big job, to get good pay, stuff like that. And um, for me, it's, it's a bit hard to watch this section because like I see what they're trying to do. I see that they want something better for their children, but I also know that the governments there are so corrupt and economically it's very hard for them to escape and not escape to climb the social ladder so to go from living below the poverty line to like middle class and high class like it's very hard and the system is rigged against them like the system is not on their side so like what it's just whenever they whenever i see the family in the video talk about like oh you know i'm, I'm working all these hours i'm i'm giving my children education that they need and one day i want them to move out of this house move out of this city move out of this country and find a better life and like i really admire that effort from them but like knowing what i know most of these people like they're not gonna escape their situation it's 
it's a cyclical cycle. Am I using that word right or phrase right? It just, it's a cycle of, it's like, I don't know, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's just, it's very hard for a person to climb the social ladder. The system is rigged against them. The system was built by the rich. So obviously they have to, the system is to protect the rich. And you know, when, like, I'm not saying all of them are gonna be in this situation. Yeah, one, one out of 100, one out of 1,000, like, one child, one child might be super smart or super talented in one area and that and they might be able to escape that it's like an example is like Manny Pacquiao he grew up in the Philippines like he was very poor but he was such a talented boxer he was able to bring his whole pretty much his whole province out of poverty you know watching these type of documentary watching this documentary in particular like it keeps me grounded, it keeps me humble, and it, it makes me appreciate all the little things that I have here, all the good things that I have here. And like, I'm not saying I'm using this documentary, like watching other people's lives struggling to live, like as a source of like keeping me humbling. It just, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I hope, I hope you know what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm not saying like, this is like very evil of me to watch actual people the people that look like me and you struggle just to keep myself humble i'm not i'm not saying that i'm just saying like whenever i watch these documentaries like it makes me want to give back even more than i already do it makes it keeps me grounded and like when i'm having a bad day like the internet's not moving far enough like moving fast enough and i'm like complaining like like and then after watching this documents like i should be grateful that i have the internet I should be grateful to have running water. I should be grateful I have a house to live in. Like not everybody have that. And it just, I think this is like a way to expand your perspective and make you, make you a more optimistic person. And it just, it makes me like a better person because like I appreciate everything in my life a lot more. I don't know, it's, it's tough to watch this documentary, but I feel like if you do have the time, it's a good documentary to watch. The world we live in is so broken. This is why like, I don't care so much about climate change because climate change is about the future and like everybody's caring about it, which is great, but the world as it is right now is already so broken. There are so many people living below the poverty line and people are just like, well, look, in 2050, we could all die. There are people dying right now. Let's just, let's just focus on the present problem first. Can we do that? There are a lot of poor people we can save them, we can help them. Like Jeff Bozos, like if he were to give 10% of his wealth, he can get rid of pe everyone living below the poverty line. But you know, we, we as a society value wealth, power over like, you know, humanity, like caring about one another. This is just, this is just an aspect I wish we as a society can improve upon and like, you know, helping fellow human beings that look exactly like us, that are us but they're struggling and you know, it just, when I see powerful and rich people not doing any charitable work, it just sickens me and I don't want to support whatever business they have. And um, something else I want to talk about is like, you know, like people in the older generation, like the older millennials and like the boomers generation, like they call our generation soft, like the younger millennial and the generation Z, Zoomer, you know, they call it soft. But I think, I think that's one of our powers, like, we feel for one another more. We empathize with one another more. The older generation, so you know, like we can't really blame them. They grew up in a time of war or the Cold War. So like every country was like, you know, making propagandas against one another. Like, you know, the Soviet hates the US, the US hates the Soviets. And then like, you know, the government made propagandas to convince the people like, we must go to war. We must put more money into the military because they might kick our ass later if we don't do that. America was taught to see a lot of country as their enemies. And um, this this indoctrination that happened to the boomer generation and the older millennial, like they were taught to hate other countries because, you know, it was a time of war, which is understandable, but not so much. But anyway, just the older generation prioritized nationalism over humanity and our generation, my generation, the late millennial, 
and uh, Generation Z, the Zoomers, we feel empathy a lot more than other generation, older generation. You know, um, we we value inclusivity, we value self-expression, freedom of expression. We value a lot of things that older generation didn't or don't want to. I don't want to get too political. You know, this is a fashion channel, but this is. Man, this tangent is long, huh? But I do have one more statement, one more tangent to go on. I truly believe our generation is gonna be the one to change the world for the better. When the boomer motherfucker die out, when the older millennial who are so out of touch with reality, when those fucker die out, when we as a generation, the younger people, take offices in the political realm, I truly believe we're gonna shape the world for a better. The world's gonna be a bit more in inclusive. We're gonna, it's gonna be a bit more empathetic to one another. And overall, I see my generation as the generation to change things for the better. But yeah, um, great documentary. It really makes you think, it made me think clearly. It just, it, it opened my eyes to so many things and it, it keeps me grounded, which is very important. Like. I am. I don't lack confidence, so you know my ego can be inflated too high sometimes. Where I think the world revolves around me, and then when I watch documentaries like this, it just it keeps me humble and it keeps me grounded. The same way that my family keeps me grounded, which is very important if you want to be a good person. But yeah, um, man, this video is, is long, huh? Um, I'll end. I'll end this video by showing you three music, three songs. I mean. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching me like going on a few tangents. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna cut it, but I'm gonna leave some of the tangent because it's important. I think it's important. And you know, some, not, not everybody's gonna watch my video entirely, but for the people that do know that I appreciate you, I appreciate that you give me your time because you know, you watching my video means that you are not watching some other video. So that's, that means a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.